We're bolstering our forces and sharpening our swords. That's right, it's War Chess from AEG. This simple yet strategic tactical tussle pits two sides against one another in a competition for control points. War Chess can be played with two players or four with two on each team. We're reviewing the standard setup for a two player game first, then we'll explain the four player variant. Setup begins with a game board placed center. Each player chooses a faction, takes a matching bag, single royal coin, and six control markers. Two of those control markers should be placed on the starting locations on the board. The remaining spaces are neutral. Additionally, the darkened sections of the board are reserved for four player games, so only the central locations apply. Next, shuffle the 16 unit cards and deal four face up to each player. These are the four units each player can control during the game. Each player takes the matching coin for that unit, takes two of each along with a royal coin and places them in the bag. The remaining coins are known as the supply. Finally, flip the initiative marker and give it to the player whose side lands face up. Throughout the game, players will draw coins from their bags and use them to play actions on the board in an effort to place their control markers on the various locations. The first player to place all their markers wins. War chest games are played over a series of rounds, each divided into two phases draw coins, and use coins. In the draw coins phase, each player draws three coins from their bag and takes them in hand, hidden from the other player. That's it, simple phase. Next, in the use coins phase, players will alternate using the coins to play actions in the game, beginning with the player who owns the initiative marker. There's a multitude of actions, but they're handily divided into three categories. We've got placement actions, discard face down actions, and discard face up actions. Placement actions are the only way to get your units on the board. The first action, deploy, allows you to place a token on an unoccupied location you currently control, creating a unit on the battlefield. You may only have one unit of that type on the board at a time. However, another placement action, bolster, allows you to add a coin to a matching unit on the board, making it stronger. The stack of coins move as one unit and is now harder to remove from the board following an attack. The discard face down actions require the player to place their coins in an area they designate as their discard pile. Once they do, they may choose from three actions. Recruit, which allows you to take one coin from your supply and add it to your discard pile. This adds a new coin to your rotation because if a bag is ever empty or doesn't have at least three coins in it, the player takes all the coins from their discard pile and adds them back into their bag. Claim Initiative. This allows a player to take the initiative token from the current owner. The initiative marker can only be moved once per round, so don't take back seats. Uh-uh. Finally, Pass allows you to pass. It's not used often, but it's there if you need it. One note, because the royal coin doesn't have a matching unit on the board, it can only be used for the discard face down actions. This means you're gonna use it a whole bunch to recruit and steal that initiative marker. Now for the discard face up actions, also known as maneuvers. These are the bread and butter of the game, allowing you to take actions with your units which match the coin you discarded. Maneuvers include move. This allows you to move the matching unit one space adjacent to an unoccupied space. Control. This allows a player to place their control marker on a location currently occupied by the matching unit. If an enemy marker is there, it's removed and replaced with your own. Give them a smug look when you do it, too. Attack allows a player to choose an enemy unit adjacent to the matching unit. This enemy is known as the target. Remove a coin from the target and place it out of the game. If it's the only coin, the target was removed from the battle. If the target was bolstered, it's still there. Lastly, the tactic action allows a player to use the tactic listed on the matching unit's card. These are the dynamic moves of the game, allowing you to move multiple spaces or attack from a distance. Some of the units also have special rules known as attributes or restrictions, which change the way they interact on the board. For instance, we have our buddy, the archer right here. His tactic is that he can shoot enemy units two spaces away. However, he is restricted from using the attack action to attack adjacent units. And that's all the actions. Rounds continue until one player has placed all their control markers to win the game. Before we wrap up, I want to tell you about that four-player variant I mentioned. This allows two teams of two players to duke it out on the full board. Each player takes a royal coin of their team and their own bag. Teams share eight control markers and place three on the starting locations. 
deal three unit cards to each player instead of four, and place two coins from each in the player's bag along with their royal coin. Players on the same team should sit opposite from each other, and all communication between players must be open. No secrets. Play continues until one team gets all of their control markers on the board to win the game. And that's War Chest. I'm Becca Scott, and I would definitely be a berserker. Just saying. You can watch me and my friends play this game on Game the Game right here on Geek and Sundry. We'll see you there.